Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Tiffany Fikes. I'm Kimber lovett Minkiti. And I'm Wendy Papazan. Hi, everybody. Happy fall. We're so excited to have you here. Uh, I'm here with my lovely co-hosts, Tiffany and Kimber. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great. I'm great. I'm jet lagged coming back from Portugal, which by the way, I met our Portugal counterparts of a four conversation podcast of women who were inspired by us, which was so fun to meet them. I love that. Yeah. It's Marta um, and three other women. Sorry, ladies, we can't remember you at the moment, but keep doing amazing stuff. They are doing amazing stuff in Portugal. So it was fun to get to meet them. I was going to keynote and he, tell your story with one yeah. of your boys, which is so fun. I did. It was exciting because I, yeah, I did a keynote and in doing it, I said, I'm going to bring my son and he's going to participate, which always terrifies people. Always. When I say, I'm going to yeah. have my 13-year-old speak with me. Um, but he was the highlight, of course, a 13-year-old kid that faces fears and he was able to share that with them, which was super exciting for me. It's amazing. So. Well, it's a result of your intentional parenting. So great job, Mama. Great job. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm glad to be back stateside for a little bit. Yeah. Until you leave for Morocco next week. I know. I'm, I don't know why. I, I don't know why I came back over this part of the world. If I'm That's being right. honest, I should be recording this in uh, on the other side of the in Atlantic. In Spain, you should be in Spain this week. I should be in Spain this yeah, week. Yeah, you should be in Spain this week. Well, something cool happened to me. I got a. A message from April Mitchell, who's my old operations director who works at Keller Williams Worldwide right now. And she's in India. And there's a picture of me. It's like when when, uh, KW won the Forbes 2022 Best Places to Work for Women. So there's like a picture of me and like three other women (laughs) on the wall in India. In India? Yeah. I love that. That's so funny. (laughs) Yeah. It's amazing. So anyway... We digress. So um, today we're going to be talking about probably one of my favorite topics. Um, I love I love goal setting, and today's topic is goal setting for 2024. And it's really five easy steps to getting anything you want. And I've been doing goal setting for a long, long time, and I'm a lot better at it than I was 20 years ago. Isn't that um, shocking? You it's do shocking. something over and you over again, something. and That's you get better. <laughs> and look what happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and actually, uh, this is our – Jay and I are doing our couples goal setting um, this weekend. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like to, like today. Yeah. Like later today. You're like, We're wait, gonna, like we, right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm recording this. No, I'm from the – <laughs> the goal setting session. No, just kidding. Uh, but yeah, we're we're actually heading out of town. We just got a little Airbnb in the Hill Country, and we're going to be doing our personal goal setting retreat because we have our other goal setting retreat that we facilitate. Uh, you know, in a, in a couple weeks, but we need to do one on our own. So I, I love the integrity of that. You're like, I'm going to do ours, our personal retreat, and then I can go pour into others. That's such a good leadership example. Absolutely. Yeah. Years well, we've been doing this for a long time. Right, like it's one of the foundational things, and yeah, we've been doing life. it for seventeen years, something like that. Setting goals as a couple, yeah, setting goals as a couple. So yeah, well, the great thing about um, being an entrepreneur is that you have a unique ability to put an idea into action. That's kind of the definition of entrepreneurialism. Um, and a lot of us have ideas that we want to put into action, but we just don't know how to do it. And so today, we're going to talk about the. Five easy steps to getting anything you want, which is basically taking a goal and getting it into action. Um, and I love this quote by Abraham Lincoln, who said, "Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe." Uh, which, if you're an entrepreneur, you're like, really? Four yeah, that hours? kind of like gives you whoa. <laughs> uh huh. Because I was even like, I could get to three, but four. I mean, like, we're going to use sixty percent of our time on the axe. Get yeah. it, Abe? Yeah, yeah. I know. Get busy, Abe. Get busy. Uh, yeah. Well, I think, and a lot of us, we you know run into the forest with our axe and we start chopping down one tree and we never finish it, and then we mm-hmm. move to the next tree and we chop a little bit more there, and then we, you know, sit and have a picnic, and pick some mushrooms, and. And then try to chop down another tree. And uh, the great thing about uh, goal setting is that we need to move from goal setting to goal accomplishing, which is 
which is what, what we're talking about today. So that's right. Here are our five easy steps. Awesome. And you know what I love about it is that it's what we started with this intentionality, that part of what this allows you to do is get really intentional about what you want to accomplish. And I had super exciting win this past weekend when I did a goal setting last year or for this year for 2023 on my personal side, my aunt was turning 80 and it was really important to me to have like pause and really celebrate what a powerful milestone, right? She's like an octogenarian, right? That thing, uh, which we learned this weekend. And so it, her birthday was this past weekend and we went away together and then we had a big family celebration. And part of like one, watching that on my 411, watching that be one of my top annual goals, seeing it, like planning it, it really was so powerful. So it's, it's in our business, but it's also like, what is our business doing? We talk about business, big mm. business, big life. And it just like, it was just amazing, right? So anyway, so I want you to think about your goals, not just all your entrepreneurial goals, but what are your life goals and how do you get there? Yeah. So step one is to create the time and space to think about it. And this seems so crazy, but like, right, planning is what we often stop and don't do. That's what gets overlooked. So step one is actually, which is why I think this is so important that we start now, that you actually take some time, slow down, which can feel counterproductive, right? I've got so much to do. It's the end of the year. It's the fourth quarter, but it actually will help you be way more productive. So take away the pressures of your daily life that always seem to feel like the urgent and the important has to get done. And this is an opportunity to set block time to actually just pause and really think about both reflecting on the past year, past years, but looking ahead. And not just like what you've always done, but what what do you really want to accomplish on the different dimensions of your life? So one of the reasons like that often, whether that's individual, couples, your business, and your team, don't set aside, right, to talk about these someday goals. It seems like everything else is so important. And then again, like if you don't know where you're going, then kind of will you ever know when you get there? Where are you going and mm. where do you want to be? And then talk yeah. about the future. I think this is a play- time to really explore, like, what do you want it to be? Not what it is right now, not what you had to do, not what you feel like you're, you're like stuck doing, but like if you just erased all of it and built the life you want, what does that look like? This should be That's a space a outside thought. of your home. Uh, it is, that is, right? That is a scary thought. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and I was going to say the only way you do that is by removing yourself from the yes. the mundane and and the like every day because we talk about it as a team. Wendy just said they're going to the hill country, so they're like driving a little bit out of their house. Um, like you got to remove yourself from the reality in order for your mind to be open to the possibility of something different. Um, I think we undervalue that sometimes. Like your 100%. physical space where you yeah. are dictates sometimes how creative you can be or how open you can be. And I think that sequencing, right? I love Wendy that you're saying that you guys are doing that as a couple. Like thinking about, hey, if I'm if I'm going to lead my team on a team advance, a team retreat, you need to have had that time, whether that's personally, whether it's a couple, like that you need to have that time for yourself first so that you're not driven by what other everybody else's world. Like you've got to first set the intentionality for yourself so that then you're building up to being able to have a really productive business that's building the world you want to have. Well, and you guys get to design the life that you want. You guys get to choose it. And I know some of us feel like we need to be a certain way or we want to emulate a certain someone in our life. And at the end of the day, you get to choose what your business looks like. Do you want it to be a big business? Do you want it to be a small business? Do you want it to be somewhere in between? Do you want to be the CEO? Do you want to be the day-to-day operator? Do you want to be the business owner? Do you want to have a role inside your business that has nothing to do with leadership, right? There's a lot of examples of entrepreneurs who decide that the CEO role isn't even for them and they get somebody else to do the other thing. So you get to choose that. And I think that's really just looking into our hearts, you know, looking into our hearts. And you can't do that, you know, on the way to work, uh, in the car. You can't do that, um, you know, between meetings. You After know, you the can't kids do go to bed. When, yeah, it's impo- it's literally impossible. And I actually feel like part of the reason our – uh, American culture is so uh, distraught right now. Is our is our lack of of white space in our life? It's just very overwhelming all the time. There's a lot of input, whether it's our phones, our TV. There's just a lot of input, and when you are a business owner, it's probably doubled. So. 
And it's well, the and birthplace of creativity, to- right? The white space is. And so if you're not creating that, and I think for women especially, asking yourself, like, what do I want? Not does the family need, not the business need, the kids need. Like, it is, it's amazing. Women especially really struggle. Like, we first go to, well, well this is what is needed of me. But really sitting with that question, what's made you happy in the last year? Where have you gotten the most energy? What does Tiffany want? Just Tiffany. Well, and it's and it's very relative to where you are in your life too. Yeah. You know, I'm at the brink of having, you know, I've got one kid in college and one who's a senior in high school. And it's a very different conversation that Jay and I are going to have this weekend than we did that we did 10 years ago. It's completely different. You know, we're not talking about how to pay for college, you know. Uh, I mean, we are, we're actually talking about how expensive it is, uh, <laughs> but you know, we're not really thinking about that kind of thing. We're really thinking about, Hey, what does our empty nest plan look like? Where do we want to go? What's, what are our hopes and dreams? And it's just a, and it's something that you kind of have to build up to in a way too, for some of these things. Cause a lot of these big life changes, you're not going to make them happen in a microsecond. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Wendy, one of the things you said about like input and Kimber, what you said about space, like you need to recognize we have all this input from social media and books and which creates comparison, which Mm -hmm. is what creates dissatisfaction or it creates us running after something that is not our own life. We, because of all this extra comparison we can put on ourselves. And I think women are more prone to it. And so we need to constantly be battling against it. And so like, one of the things that I do is I look at what, what am I doing right now? Like, let's, let's get, like, look at what I'm doing right now. And which of these things do I want to do in the future? Or what are the things, like you said, Wendy, that I, I don't want to do anymore? Maybe I don't want to be the CEO, even though I think I should be, because mm-hmm. that's what everyone tells me success is. But maybe it isn't for you personally. And so, I think that quiet, that white space is where we can get real with ourselves. And also good people asking you good questions, whether that's a coach, um, whether that's your partner or, you know, somebody else that says, or it's your circle of women that are around you saying, you seem miserable. Is this really what you want to do? Like, you have permission to do something else if you want to. And so, like, but that is not going to happen until you slow down and realize where you're creating your definition of success and what that looks like. And so. Yeah. And I think, Wendy, like you should, like this going a little further out, right? So like when you think about the five year, sometimes like especially that season of life, like I've got a freshman in high school. So all of a sudden the idea of like four summers left with him at home looks very different. And so I might make, like, I might have different choices, like in five years when I kind of get to frame it, but I actually might say this year with that context and that perspective, especially when you're in the thick of like just life, sometimes just like that sense of like, hey, these are actually, this is actually a gift. Like I do want to be really intentional about maybe working less for a part of the year so that I can be really more intentional because like, I look at like at our a powerful circle, we've got a lot of people who are on the other side of that journey and just, we all know how fast it goes. So just be giving that perspective of where you are, that some of your goals might actually be because you're like, wow, I am going to really maybe like that counterbalance and push over here in this part season of my life because it's going to be another season where I'll be able to focus on something else. Well, and that leads into kind of step two, which is think bigger. So you need to get away, create space, create the time for it. And then when you're there, you need to think bigger. So if you can think out five years or even 10 years, that helps you. So like, and right now that may give you just anxiety to think about. Like, I don't even know what we're having for dinner tonight. You know, I came to this meeting at the wrong time today. So like thinking about 10 years from now can be really overwhelming, but Kimber, to your point, like in 10 years, you have three less children at home. I have no children at home. You know, like, what do I want to do today until I realize what I I want that to look like? Oh my gosh. (laughs) That's insane. Uh, I better not be a grandma. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, but thinking about that helps you inform. Kimber, to your point, like the relationship you want to have with your kids in 10 years dictates what you do this year, I I think. And if you allow yourself to think bigger about it, um, 
and doing it with the people in your life. So whether that's the team that you're leading, you know, like right now, our team is really focused on um, how can you create a real estate experience that is fun? Is that even possible? Is it really possible for people to come to you to have fun when they buy their house? And we're brainstorming crazy ideas like I love countdown. this idea. Oh, I, I could talk about this forever. And we're going to start <laughs> piloting some of these ideas with like countdown clocks in the windows of our, our houses that lead to a party in the yard instead of like launching online. You launch at a party. It's, it's just... We're going to try some things. And um, that's not something that happens at team meeting. You know, like that's right. getting away and removing yourself from reality too. Because that was step one of thinking bigger, or that is step one of thinking bigger, is no, no, this is not the time for reality. Like this is where you just dream. How could it work? And we're not going to talk about, well, not how. What would it look like? We're not going to talk about how or get into the reality of it. It's just dream and figure it out. You know, that was well, one and, of the – oh, go ahead. Well, I just was going to say I love this idea of thinking bigger. Uh, and we did this with our wealth goals. And I think sometimes when we set a big goal in the future, there's a lot of <clears> – <throat> I don't know, intimidation around that because you're like, well, how am I good? How am I really going to get there? Which actually we'll talk about in a minute. But there is power in setting intentionality around a really big goal because you're going to build the habits and systems that are going to get you there. And maybe you'll get there in 10 years and maybe you won't. So when we uh, went down our wealth building journey, <clears throat> we had a 10-year goal to become net worth millionaires. And our net worth was about $2,200 when we set that goal. We also wanted to own 10 rental properties, and we wanted to have $75,000 in passive income. And honestly, I thought all those were crazy when we sat down. I was like, this is nuts. Like, what are we talking about? We, we you know, we're 32 years old. We're not going to be millionaires. Like, I really didn't think it could be possible. And yet I was willing to kind of put some steps into place. And within six, six and a half years, we did become net worth millionaires and, um, and we've achieved all those other goals, you know, since then, but you, it's okay to set a big goal and not, and not, and, and it turns out it looks differently, you know, but I, I do think there's a lot of value in setting that big long-term goal. And I, I think setting that goal and then asking yourself, like, what about that goal is important to you? What happened? Like, what do you do? What happens when you get there? Because I think that's where, especially as entrepreneurs, like, there's a fire that you get up and you, like, it, where a lot of us are in the hard right now, right? The, the, there's no question that we're in a real estate recession for sure, right? The, like, the unit count is going to be less than what it was at the greatest economic recession we've seen in our country. Like the, it's real, right? So the thing, the fire in your belly that gets you up, like you should be you're, the relationship, which we'll talk about more right to that goal. But you want to sort of like test it out, write something down. Like, how do you feel? Do you wake up and you're like, oh, I could fight for that. Or when that happens, I'm having this huge impact. When I'm a net worth millionaire, like I, that means I'm going to be able to impact these things. I'm going to have this kind of a legacy. It's back to that why for those that have like, right, have the mission statement and quantum leap. Like you really want that that like when I, I wrote that, that down, it was a little scary, yeah. but I also like I could wake up every day ready to like pounce on that that thing. That that's so brilliant because I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, we're just hardwired for growth. And it's great to stop and ask ourselves, like, why is growth important to us? You know, I know Sarah, she's always talking about how growth is uh one of her top values. And I know for her, it manifests in the lives that she changes and the ability she has to give back in the communities that she serves. And for some of us, are we just chasing unbridled growth for no reason whatsoever, you know? Yeah, so, more for the great. sake of more. Brilliant question, Kimber. So smart, so smart. Well, and that leads us to step three, which is you need to create a plan, right, around the goal with priorities and strategies. And um, we actually recorded an episode, uh, which I will put in the show notes, of how to create a one-page business plan. Inside of Keller Williams, we call it a GPS, and that stands for, uh, it helps you get you work to where you want to go, but also goals, priorities, and strategies. And it really starts with figuring out what you want, which is why step number one was step number one, okay? Um, and 
that's tough. This is the hardest part. And sometimes we just overlook it. You know, as business owners, sometimes we just wake up, open our email, and we just go, go, go all day long without any planning or thought. And, you know, I'm I'm guilty of it. Tiffany's guilty of it. Kimber's guilty of it. We all do it. We, pro- we probably all do it way more than we want to still. And, you know, just having intentionality around your day, your week, your year, your five years, your 10 years, all of those bits of intentionality build up over time. And then you look up and 5, 10, 15, 20 years later, you have your life by design. It's it's incredible. Um, But you need a plan to get there. And whether it's you're planning with yourself, whether you're planning with your significant other, whether you're planning with your team, um, you want to have a plan, you know, and Gary Keller tells us, how can we get on? He asks us, how can we get on the same page if we're on more than one page? So you want to create a one page business plan that's succinct and that everybody on the team can look at on a daily basis or weekly basis or whatever that looks like and really understand what that is. So, well, and that's sometimes the hardest part of the plan is the edit. I mean, it's the hardest part of writing a book. Mm-hmm. It's the hardest part yeah. of doing anything is choosing the great things that are not going to go on that piece of paper. Like mm. the good work you want to do that are not are not going to make it the cut and you've got to cut them because if you insist on it all being in there, none of it will happen. And so that edit onto one page is the most crucial part of your planning section. I love that. Well, and that's one thing that we've been working really hard on with our sister company, Her Best Life is really getting focused, getting focused around the things that matter the most. And uh, that's not easy to do when you have seven alpha females who are basically idea generating machines and, uh, you know, an, an incredible team who's ready, willing, and able to implement the ideas. So that's, it's hard. You're right. It's really hard. Yep. It's really hard. Um, yeah, so you want to make your goal a SMART goal. You guys have probably heard of the SMART acronym, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And we're not going to go into all of that. Like I said, we'll put that episode in the show note that talks about all of that. But you do want to make it specific and time-bound, whether that's in a year, five years, 10 years, a month, whatever that looks like. Um, and then you want to make it big enough to require several areas of focus, but not too big that it requires more than four areas of focus. So like, for instance, uh, you probably wouldn't create a plan around drinking enough water. Probably don't need three priorities around that, right? Um, But you might create a plan around improving your health drastically over the course of the next year. And one of those priorities might be to drink more water, right? Uh, So you want to just make it big enough to require a few areas of focus, but not too big that it requires more than four areas. And if it requires more than four areas, then you got to do exactly what Tiffany said, which is to cut the least important ones. And, you know, I've had the benefit of listening to my husband come home and talk about his interactions with Gary on his planning. And Gary will always tell you that the number one thing needs to be the number one thing. And Gary will say, until the number one thing is done, we're not going to look at number two and number three. So when you're creating your areas of focus, right, you want the number one thing to be the number one thing. And and until that one's done, you're not going to think about two and three, which is really hard. That's really hard to do. Oh, it's it's really hard. It's hard. And there is a little bit of like placing a bet, right? Like you want it to be informed, But at the end of the day, like you're saying, okay, based on the historical information of like, right, how how we performed against that goal in the past or like what what does the rest of the data show about the likelihood? It's back to sort of the one thing, right? Like with Jay and Gary, what's the domino? What's the, you want to be asking yourself, okay, so if I did this thing, does that make the other two and three a little bit easier or or not even necessary? So you're trying to get to the place where you're like, okay, I believe, like I'm invested that this first thing is the thing and that should be well-informed and it really challenging each step so that you're not like, yeah, I jumped to three because I wasn't really that invested in number one. Well, and that's why you need to have that white space for the thinking time. So the yep. way you go about this is, is you, let's say, let's go back to our health goal. You know, we want to have a certain health goal and you want to take a few minutes just to brainstorm everything that you could possibly think of that might be a priority there. It might be 
I need to sleep more. I need to drink more water. I need to take my vitamins. I need to eat more vegetables. Like there's lots and lots and lots of priorities under that that you could come up with. And, you know, what are your top two to three, right? What are your top two to three based on what you know about yourself, right? So that's going internal and thinking and having that white space to do that. And then once you brainstorm that, you want to think about the two, you know, two or three, four areas of focus, circle those, and then these are going to be your priorities. And then <clears throat> once you got your priorities, the next step is really putting those priorities into action. So what are your strategies? Or I like to call them action steps, right? What are the steps that you're going to do? Because at the end of the day, with your business, with your health, your life, you can only control what you can control. And that's what you wake up and do every day. We all have 24 hours in the day. And we can only control what we do in those 24 hours. We can't control what the real estate market looks like. Uh, we can't control, you know, what happens in the economy. We can't control whether or not, you know, the, uh, our American politics are working properly. Like we have no control over that. So we need to wake up every day and can control what we can control. So the strategies is really your actions. What are you going to do every single day? And so if one of your steps is to, one of your priorities is to eat better, right? Some of your action steps under that might be, I'm, I'm going to have a healthy breakfast every, every day that looks like this. Number two might be, you know, I'm not going to buy any more, you know, potato chips because, because I, yeah, both actually, um, yeah, or I'm going to eat a healthy meal when I'm traveling, right? Or I'm going to pack enough snacks when I'm driving around during the day in order to um, not eat junk food. Yeah, so whatever that looks like, um, you can control all of those things, right? You can control all of those things. Yep, and again, you're putting those in order of importance. I love that. Okay, so you're getting into action. And I would propose that the first step of action is our step four of how do you get everything you want in life. You need to get your partner and team or team on the same page with you um, because that's where you're doing these activities together. Um, I think as the leader, very often for goal setting for my team, I will do goal setting as the leader alone. And then I will go to the team and I don't go to the team and say, here's the goal, guys. Here it is. Put it down on the table. Y'all get to work on it. Great. Thanks for coming. You know, like <laughs> that's that your not friendly what the leader retreat. voice. That's yeah, that's my friendly leader voice. <laughs> um, but that's not what you do. I have that piece of paper. But we as a team do the same activity over again. So I've already informed myself about like what I think is important for the goals. And then I'm there to hear what the team has to say about it. Because what they think is important, I need to know where that aligns with, with my goals. It's the same with my, my partner, with Joshua. When we do our annual goal setting for the year, like we go away, think about it separately, and then come together and say, hey, this. let me share with you what was on my list. Here, this was what was on my list. And we look for the overlaps. And sometimes he says something that I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that. That's so much better than anything on my list. We'll just throw out my whole list and we'll do that. Um, but if you just come in with, this is what we're doing. And maybe you have a partner that isn't like keen on goal setting or isn't as driven as you necessarily. You still can't drag them behind you. It doesn't work. Or at least it, I've not seen it work. Ladies, have you seen it work? No, it doesn't work. And actually, uh, Jay always talks about um, when we do our couple, when we do our goal setting retreat with the one thing, he says, imagine a scenario where uh, you and your partner are in a car and the entrepreneur is behind the driver's seat and they've got the car floored going 120 miles an hour down the highway. And your partner is in the back seat with a blindfold on and has no idea where you're going. Mm. That's what that feels like. That's what a terrorist does. Like that's a kidnapping <laughs> is what that is. You know, yeah, like you've got a yeah, bat. That's, that's a great yeah, visual. Yeah. And sometimes our team feels feel feel that way. They, you know, we come, we come back from a powerful event. We've got some ideas. We give them no context. We 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 don't explain what's going on and we just dump stuff on them and expect them just to be bought into it. 
Absolutely. And then a lot of times that we're disappointed, like visually, like visibly disappointed because we were like, we're, we're charging the hill for 200. And then you look at their individual units and like, it doesn't add up, like, right? Like they're not motivated. They don't have the same goals as we do, right? Because you didn't, you weren't creating space. Like you actually had a chance to think about it, which is like, good job. Now you're actually facilitating that for your team. And then you've got to like, then look at the gap as a leader, that's an on you, right? But I think so many times we see this in sales businesses where we, we show up with the goal and we're like, that means each of you have to do 48. Okay. Like, got it. Let's go. And then when they look up after into Q1, they're like, what happened? They didn't, they're not committed. They're not motivated. Well, no, you didn't listen to them, right? Like you didn't give them the space. And then actually part of our job as leaders is helping show a path for them to get to those goals and then figure out another, a broader plan. If that goal doesn't meet our broader business goal and how we're going to get there. Well, I love that Kimber. And I think everybody listening needs to realize like you're the crazy one. You're the crazy one. Yeah. You're yeah, there, the it's not them, it's you. You it's you. You're the weirdo. Okay. You're the nut with the big goals and the big plans and wanting to work 18 hours a day and with no sleep and working when you're sick and all of that stuff. Like you're the weirdo. Okay. It's not that everybody else is wrong. You're the nut job. Okay. And so we you love you because we that. are those weirdos too. Oh, That's yeah, right. We stand in solidarity. No, say, we we yeah, are with we, you. We, and we, we yeah, are those We weirdos. put the we in weirdo. Yeah. We put the we <laughs> but once weirdo. we realized that, there was a lot of grace, right? Because we were like, oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah. So just, just as a reminder. And so for your team, that looks like a team retreat of some kind. Mm -hmm. You need to create space for that. And I know for me and our team, it looks different every year. Like sometimes we rent a, a lake house and one year we were just, oh, we were so stressed. It was before COVID and we got, we got a boat and we did the whole thing on a boat. Like That's we brought a, a flip chart and everything and just did all our goal setting on a boat where we could just jump in the water to take a break and then come back at it. Um, but then there's some years where we're like, we've got a single mom on the team, people who don't have a lot of childcare. All right, we're going to do something local. We're not, we're going to sleep at home, but we're going to do it away from the office somewhere like that. I know for the, like for my, for my couples thing, Joshua and I always go away. And one of the things we're really looking forward to is um, attending the one thing goal setting retreat because the great thing about that is the structure is built for you. The white space is built for you. Like you get to just show up with your partner um, or your friend or your business partner, like whoever you need to goal set with, you can come to that, um, which I think is happening in a couple of weeks, right? Or by Maybe? yourself, yes. right? Like if yeah, you're, or by, or yourself. You're by yourself. Yeah. yeah, actually we have, we have quite a few people who are there by themselves, either they're single or they're in a relationship in the, in the couple, uh, their partner doesn't want to come. Um, and we have quite a few businesses that come. So yeah, so this is through the the one thing, Jay's one thing business, productive. Uh, it's November 2nd through 4th, and it's going to be in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona at the, Gor oh my Lovely. gosh, well, the gorgeous Fairmont Hotel. I mean, this place is great. And uh, we actually have a special code for you guys. So a discount code. If you're listening and you've been on the fence, I know it's only a couple weeks away, but the discount code is HBL, Her Best Life, uh, 2023 GSR. So HBL 2023 GSR. We'll put that in the Her show Her Best notes. Life 2023, yeah, a goal-setting retreat. So, yeah. So I, I hope it. you guys come. Yeah, we've got uh, – and I'm so glad that you're coming. We've and got then that takes us to step five, right? Right? Because yeah. this is how you actually get into relationship with your goals, right? Like, what does well, actually? Yeah. Can we? Can we just? Because I just wanted to ask you, Kimber, because yeah. I, I, I loved hearing about Tiffany about what your, um, what you do for your retreats. Do you have goal setting retreats, and what do you do? I'd yeah, love to just yeah. So I mean, we actually literally like on our honeymoon, it's kind of a weird time, but we like wrote down a couple of goals as a couple, right? Like, what were the things mm -hmm. that we wanted to accomplish? And that's been a really powerful like cont continuing that cadence and the framework of the goal setting retreat. Like, we actually did it for the first time in COVID when you guys did it virtually, and we like hold up mm -hmm. like right. We the kid like it was hot mess because it just was a hot mess that time. But we but like do you, kind do of you locked ourselves your... in the room. 
Do you do something you for personally? your team? Your oh, yeah. real, te- real estate team? Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. we do team advances every year, right? And mm-hmm. what we found is like, there's two things that have really shifted that. One is like preparing them with a little bit of thinking, the white space. Like we do that, but we actually ask our team to do that as well. And so we, mm-hmm. we guide that, right? There's like a one pager, just some questions for them to answer and to reflect on. Because again, like for some of us, we walk into that because we think about like goal setting and planning and like that's our jam and like like I love it, right? Like I am excited. Yeah. This is one of my favorite times of the year. But it's for some people, it's intimidating, right? That question mm-hmm. of like, what do you want? What do you get excited about? What are your goals for the next year? And so, giving our our, our team some time to reflect on that, we find that has allowed the time together to really be impactful. And then creating so space for that creativity. Like we block some of the time where we're just like, like Tiffany said, like how do we have fun with our people? Like what are what's a wild, crazy, audacious thing that you we could do that we've never done before. And we just like let people kind of like like ping pong ideas and think and be creative. And I think it helps when you're in, we're, we're always out of the office. We, right. We've done it overnight and we do actually, I mean, sometimes it's a little painful this time of year because we do an executive team overnight. Then we do our leadership team and then mm. we do everybody. So we we end up, we re- pretty much retreat <laughs> for the next three months. You're gone yeah. for a week. Well, well, you have a, your, your world is really big. Yeah, we have a so. big business. So you got to get everybody. Yeah. And, and we find that, like Tiffany said, we stay local, but we do go away. And ideally, mm-hmm. like our, our executive team, that's overnight for two nights because we're really trying to like create space. We have to almost create the white space because it's hard. People don't intentionally do that. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. So that well, helps we, us we have go a to our ranch. Oh, we, we go to our ranch, which is so fun. Yeah, your team, your always, team, your goes team. To the our team always does. Yeah, we go out there and walk around with the emu and things like that. So, my team. What I also good, love about the ranch the goal is setting. a good white space. It's a great white oh, space. Yeah. yeah, we've had many, many retreats uh, with our circle there. I mean, gosh, I can't even count how many. Probably ten, maybe. I don't know, five, five, six. Yeah, 10, the first one know, I ever did was there. I think the one other thing on the goal setting, just the retreat that you guys do in November, it's also great to think about who in your world, like, right? Like who's your top person? Because this is one of the best Mm. gifts and investments that Mm. you can make in your people. So is there somebody in your world who you know, like, hey, your top person, somebody that you really want to invest in, what a gift this would be for them as a couple or individually to come and have this experience together. I think so many of us, we know that that, like your top people, the extent to that their significant others are understanding and invested. This is a time like we know we go to we go to a lot of these conferences and you come back and you're so excited and if you've got a partner yeah. who's not in the business that can be really hard. And so I've seen just the power of that. Like we gifted the virtual one to several people in our organization and the feedback was just I mean from the partners. Like thank you so much. Like this changed the conversation, this changed the relationship. Yeah. And that and that's something that I'm doing with my team this year is quite a few of them are coming with their part with their significant others, which will be it'll be great to have them in the room. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. It's neat. Yeah. All All right. right. Well, that that brings us. We ready? Fifth five. Yeah. (laughs) I was ready. You tell. I was like, relationship (laughs) to the goal, relationship to the goal. Because we have all this stuff and we do all these things. and, And one of our biggest, you know, failures and learnings was like, we would do all of this work and then we would put it on a shelf or it would be in a Google Drive and we would literally not look at it again until October. Until it's not like we pull it out. And, and sometimes it'd be like pleasantly surprised that like, oh, look, we did say we wanted to do that. And that happened. And I think that's like, that was part of the evolution of this process. And I think it's where step five becomes so important. Like, what's your relationship to the goal? How do you actually like, right, stay connected to what it is? How are you setting up a structure? Are you revisiting it daily, weekly, monthly by yourself? Is your team, like our team set up a regular monthly 135 review, right? So we literally already on the calendar, we calendar it out for the full year and we add that time. One of the things we added personally, because we kept saying we want to do a financial review. We want to be able to, well, we put it on the schedule. So when you look at it and you're saying, okay, so how does this thing that I said was number one actually get incorporated in? And I find that this is where the accountability part is really critical. So like, right, we, we got to be self-accountable. But if you know health is important and, hey, is hiring a coach, is getting into like something that's going to, you can take action on and then you can have that relationship to the goal on a regular basis. And for us, that a lot of it is driven by schedule. So if you're making a dramatic change, like we want to believe that we wake up January 1st and all the habits that we had in the prior year are gone. 
And we just we, we have a whole new script. <laughs> we get to start afresh. We just start Yay. fresh. Whatever was happening in December somehow is not going to happen anymore. So I know this year for me, one of the big changes, because I was like, okay, white space, white space. But then I have 30 hours of scheduled reoccurring meetings. Well, how do you have white space, right? So I literally blocked, which is what I love for this podcast time. On Fridays, I told the team, after 12 o'clock, I will do no meetings. It's, it's Kimber's implementation block. I can put whatever I want in there, but you all cannot schedule anything in that time. And just setting up a boundary, like the team a thousand percent respects it. It's blocked every single Friday. And then I have this beautiful Friday afternoon to do whatever I need to do. And anyway, so I think getting into that habit around the goals. Well, and one thing that I've done is now that we don't store uh, files on our computer, really, and our desktop can be more clear, um, I have my goals and my, my, my priorities on my desktop. I save it as my background screen. So every time I turn on my computer, that's what I, I mean, I don't, uh, uh, I don't every time consciously look at it, but it's put up in front of me every time I open the computer. Um, and that's just helped me. That's been a hack. I love that. Well, I have a fun little tip too that you can do. So if you have a big goal, you can turn your password <gasps> into your goal. I love that. You know, I like long sentence passwords. <laughs> or you could shorten it. But I mean, you know, it could be something like, you know, build wealth or, um, you know, a hundred million or whatever. That Go looks on like. sabbatical. Go on sabbatical. Exactly. Yeah. So you could do that as your password because your brain is listening to you during the day, you know, so oh, I'll hack for that. you. Well, guys, uh, I invite you to join us at the couples. Uh, actually, it's the, called the Goal Setting Retreat. It's not just for couples. It's about 50% couples in um, Scottsdale in a couple weeks. The code for that is going to be HBL 2023 GSR. And if you can't make it to that, then make sure you follow these steps. And first one is to create time and space to think about your goals. The second one is going to be to think bigger. If you can think out five or 10 years, it's going to be very powerful because the habits that you put into place are going to be bigger habits and they're going to support bigger success. Step three, you want to create that plan and uh, make sure that plan has got one smart goal, a few strategies, and then you've got, sorry, a few priorities and then action steps, action, action, action. You can only control what you can control. And then step four is to get your team, get your partner. I guess if you're a single person, you don't have a business, get yourself on the same page. Probably means get accountability. Um, create a one-page plan, right? How can we get on all get on the same page if it's a 50-page plan? That's impossible. And then step, step number five, what does that relationship look like with your goals? You know, are you looking at them every day? Are they on your home screen like Tiffany? Are you pulling up your goals once a week in your planning time that's time blocked in your calendar? Is your leadership team looking at them weekly or monthly or whatever that looks like? Because like Kimber said, you don't want to go a whole year and not have looked at your goals. So guys, this is actually crucial. Uh, for what we're talking about here. You can't go out and build a big business or even build a bigger life without goal, goal setting. So tis the season. Uh, go out there, set some goals, plan your goals, and uh, we will see you next week. See Bye. you guys next week. Bye.